that's the full truth. The doc here told me so. Why don't you talk a little? Sure. You're going to need friends, Louis. And we can make things more comfortable for you. I'm laughing at you. Be sensible. We know Molly was with you in the holdup. We found her fingerprints smeared all over the steering wheel of your car. And this was in your wallet. I told you she ain't got nothing to do with it. Besides, you got me. Be satisfied. I will be. As soon as they're locked in the same pay you're headed for. Send devils with a little thought. I better beat it. Molly, wait. I'll hide you here so I can fix it with one of them greaser skippers to take you to South America. Not with a girl like you can get along anywhere, Molly. Yeah. Anywhere. And anyhow. I can't do nothing more for you, girl. You know, it wasn't me that got the end of this mess. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. I didn't mean it like that. All right. All right. Rock in the cradle of the deep And calm and peaceful is my sleep Rock in the cradle of the deep Baboon, you sound like a steam winch. You ain't got no soul for music, you heathen, you. Come on, Porky, let's take him to dry dock. Yeah. Come on, boy. Come on, you fishermen. Come on, you on a con him a boy fancy. I calls him a little feathered friend. <laughs> Especially the fellas. <laughs> hey, no more drinking. Coffee's what we need. I'll make you a pot of jab that'll knock both your lamps out. Take the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a peculiar boy is a pelican. 
His beak holds more than his belly can. What a noble boy it is he. doing here? Well, you see, it's all a mistake. I bought a ticket for the Leviathan, and in the dark, I thought this was it. Now, don't get smart with me. I'm the boss here, and I don't like wisecracks, especially from a stowaway. I'm not stowing away. I'm just sleepy. Sleepy? Come on, what's the racket? Well, you see, I'm broke, and I didn't have any place to sleep. I saw your boat here, high and dry on the waves, and I was tired and cold. So? I went to sleep, and I just woke up. Oh, you just woke me up. <laughs> here we are. Yeah, here we are. And here you ain't. You're going back. Hey, Porky. What? Get your motor up. Come down here. Wait till I tell you what's happened, then we're going back to shore. What is this, a merry around? Don't argue with me. We've got a stowaway, a woman. No kidding. I'll see if she's got a girlfriend. Ah, uh, shut up. We're going to head for port as quick as you can. Nothing doing. This sea air is better than what's circulating in them jails. What do you mean? I mean I hate confinement. And those cops are going to make sure we're going to get plenty of it. I guess you're right, Porky. We can't risk showing ourselves for a few days. Even for a dame. Them are words of wisdom, Skipper. Bring a bunk up here for her on deck and get her out of my cabin. Salutation. Oh! Mm. Lady, I never met you before. But you sure made an impression on me. Well, so far, you're just a headache to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's going on here? Get out of here, you big lug. I was just going to make some coffee when I bumped into a friend. Yeah? Listen, besides being a stowaway, you're a nuisance. Now, keep out of our way while you're on this boat. Why don't you put me ashore, then? That's my business. I'm skipper here. When it's convenient for me to go ashore, I'll go, and not before. Well, uh, when will it be convenient? Shut up. And make yourself scared. Show her where the bunk, Porky. You've got a disposition like a rattlesnake. Make your own coffee and like it. Fresh cream and sugar in mine, please. God. You didn't have to be so nasty. I was only trying to make myself useful. Sure, sure, I know. Hey, can you bake lemon meringue pie? Maybe. Why? Oh, nothing. Only I was thinking about how much we like it. Porky, I told you what to do. Aye, aye, sir, and a couple of salutes. Graham. 
You can't talk to me like that. Oh, I can't, eh? No, you can't. Well, I will while you're on this boat. Oh, you and your boat. I wish I'd never set foot on it. Or eyes on you. That's mutual. If you don't like it, why don't you get off? All right. I will. Look, she did. Yeah, and she can't swim. Ah, oh, that's shame. Attaboy, chap. You get a medal for that. Personally, I'll be glad we go ashore tomorrow. Oh, do we go back tomorrow? Sure. We're almost out of fuel and we only carry three days of flying. Well, I guess that's the end of my cruise. Maybe. Where do you go from here? Oh, just around. No place in particular. This tub ain't a bad home for them that ain't too particular. You're a good fellow, Forky. I'd like to stay aboard if I was wanted. I could clean and fix the cabin up nice. Lots to work with. I could get you what you needed. Susan, white oil cloth would do it. Any doilies? <laughs> no doilies. It wouldn't be too fancy. Just cheerful. You'll see. Oh, but I don't think you'll let me stay aboard. Keep telling me I'm a pest around here. Remember when you jumped overboard? He jumped in off your back, didn't he? Figure it out yourself. That's right. Don't get yourself all tired out. What do you think this is? An excursion boat? Speaking to me? No, it's him I'm talking to. Sorry, Captain. I was just in one of my moods. It's them sunsets that does it. Brings out the artistic in me. Yeah? Well, see how much art you can get into painting that wheel now. It's beneath me to do this. But you're the boss. Get going. Well, what do you want? I just wanted to remind you that you haven't spoken to me in two days. Well, I'm glad you reminded me. Something I want you to do. Really? What? Show the buttons on that shirt. Is that all? No. After you sew it, I won't. Thanks for the opportunity. You must think I'm working my way through college. Well, this will be just as good an education for you. You don't look like you're on speaking terms with any work. Listen, I've worked all my life, but not for any man. And when I start, it won't be from one who orders it. That's funny, Dan. The more I see of you, the less I know you. Maybe I'll tell you about me sometime and ask your advice if you ever become civil. Well, you better write me for an appointment. I'm busy all this week. Oh, I should know better than expect any intelligence from a fish scaler. Maybe you're right. But we're all put on it for a reason. I've got the fish and you've got the work. You look healthy. I don't like anything about it. 
Yeah. Her coffee is good. And the ham and eggs is all right. I guess it must be time for lunch. Must be noon. Well, if it is, Morgan Rot will be shooting the sun. You know what beats me how he thinks he's always in sea and must get his bearings? Yeah. For the last ten years he's been sailing that ship. And for the last ten years it's been tied up all that he's been sailing. Don't kid yourself. Morgan Rock might be funny about that boat of his, but he's nobody's fool. Take him over on the feet and put on the feet bag. How are you, Captain? Greetings. It's been a shore in weeks. What's the news? Plenty. We're running our boat American plan now. Three meals a day and a classy chef for an appetite. Aye. Yeah, and instead of an engineer, I got a human phonograph. Come on aboard. We're so rich now, we even got napkins. Don't listen to that square head. Come on, Morgan. Everything okey-doke? I hope so. Go below. I'll bring him down. Soup's on, Captain. It can wait. But it's lemon meringue pie. Yeah, that's right, Chris. Never keep the mess waiting. Except the foul weather keeps you on the bridge. There's going to be plenty of foul weather soon. On the bridge or somebody's nose. If I wasn't the only man in this crew, I'd start a mutiny. Yeah. Come on, Morgan. Some class, huh, kid? What is this, a boat or a beauty parlor? Well, I, I ain't seen a cabin as cozy as this since I was captain on a ferry boat 30 years ago. Well, I can believe it. That's just where it belongs. I can't haul fish in through lace curtains, and I ain't gonna try. A woman's dainty touch can decorate a lighthouse. My congratulations. Morgan, this is Molly, our housekeeper. This is Captain Morgan. Uh, happy to meet you, miss. And I've reason to know what I'm talking about. I've spent ten years alone on my old ship. Sometimes a female is a heaven's blessing to a sailor man. Thanks, Captain. I'm glad to hear a real sailor's opinion. Oh, excuse me, Erin, but I, I, I was trying to place where I'd seen you before. Well, I'm sure we've never met. You see, I'm a stranger in these parts. Oh, of course. Uh, one makes lots of mistakes at my age. Won't you uh, sit here? I don't know. I, I, I'll wait till the captain takes his place at the head of the board. That's right. Come on, Skipper. Come on, Chris. 
I'm not hungry. Well, I've cooked everything you like. Please try to eat. Sit down, Captain. Ain't it too bad about Chris losing his appetite? <laughs> Don't try that with that lemon meringue pie. <laughs> I guess I'm kind of funny, Chris. Most people laugh when they're happy, but I cry. Oh, Chris, I am so happy. I'm happy too, Molly. But I, I just can't say it so well. Come here. Molly. Yes, Chris. Will I what? Marianne. What do you think? I think I'm the happiest guy in the Pacific. And that takes in a lot of territory. I'll tell you what. We'll get down to San Diego for a while. But there's a fishing good down there. And so is honeymoon. But there's something I've got to tell you. Something about my past. Your past? Yes. There was another man then, Chris, and he was a... Molly. I don't want to hear any of it. As far as I'm concerned, what happened then is, well, it's just like the wake of this old boat. It's behind us. You understand? Is that the way you feel about it? Yeah. No matter what it might mean in the future. Then I'll forget it. Forever, I hope. Let me see. What was it I was asking you before? Tell you. Oh, yes. And the answer is still... of Los Angeles County, respectively. Do either of you or any person within the hearing of my voice know any lawful reason why I should not perform this ceremony? If you do, please make it known at this time. If not, forever hold your peace. Well, I... Uh, there is no reason why they should not be married. Please join hands. Lars Christensen, do you take this woman, Molly Clark, to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Molly Clark, do you take this man, Lars Christensen, to be lawful wedded husband? I do. Then by the power vested in me by the state of California and Los Angeles County, thank you, man and wife. Thank you. 
dump a year. This is the first time I've seen you. I couldn't help it, Louie. I've been working on your case and, and others, too. Yes, mainly others. Now, Louie. Skip it. What'd you find out about Molly? Not a sign of her. She probably stowed away on a boat to Mexico or South America. Why, well, even her old friend Mother McGee hasn't heard from yeah, her. Yeah, well, I'll find her. <coughs> this jute mill don't get me first. You couldn't spring your grandmother out of a juvenile court. Do something quick, do you hear? It's tough, Louie. You know, your reputation don't smell so good. And your reputation don't remind me exactly of roses. Be reasonable, Louie. You know I feel for you like a brother. Why, I'm moving heaven and earth for you. Hey, how much time we got? Two minutes. Tell it to him. I heard it before. Gee, yeah, I'm happy, Mother. You should be. The fine husband and now fine son. He does look like Chris, doesn't he? And you, Molly. You're a changed girl with all that bomb stuff washed out of your hair. I wouldn't know you if I met you on the street. Do you think anyone else would? Now, don't you start worrying again. But you shouldn't be living around in this harbor now. Why? Did you hear anything about Louis? No. I didn't mean Louis. They got him up for a long rescue. Well, what did you mean? I meant this ain't no place to bring up a little one like that. Chris does want to live ashore. Sure. Any port but this. The love of the saints do it soon. Goodbye, my child. Rest easy. Thanks, Mother. Thanks for your advice. Oh, goodbye, my child. Well, hello, Mother. Hello, Chris. You're not jumping off, are you? Oh, sure. I don't like to leave those men at that cash register more than an hour. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Watch your step, Mother. Sure, sure. Goodbye. Yes. How's my family? How's my baby? Huh? <laughs> Come on up here. Oh, man. Well, are you talking about this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If I said I didn't want the baby to grow up to no better future than ours, you wouldn't get mad, with. You? Well, of course not. I know what you mean. He'll be no fisherman if I can help it. I think we'd better live ashore for his sake. Sure. Some place away from here. Some place away from the harbor. Don't worry, Molly. I'll still let those gentlemen down to be one. Then you and I can go to any place you want. Did you hear that, Skipper? You're not going to be a fisherman. You have to cry about it, no. Don't close that bag yet, Molly. I'm going to pack my gun. Well, I don't think we'll have room for anything else. Oh, this is light and caliber. Is that everything? No. Almost forgot that. Well, everything's all settled. I'm going to see Jensen down to Canrail now and get the money for the boat, and we're on the way to Oregon. Wish you were coming with us, Porky. What's that you've got on your arm? I got packed, too. I'm tired of fishing. I think I'll take a run up to Frisco for a vacation. They got the biggest aquarium in the country up there. You're not going anyplace. Jensen wants you to stay on the Freedom Runner. Oh, Porky, isn't that wonderful? Wonderful? Why, it's absolutely necessary. I'm the only one can get this kicker a running. If I stay ashore, so does the freighter. Call me aboard here. Oh, forget it. Come on ashore with me. Bye to Mother McGee before I see Jensen. Is it... Don't be long. Come on, get the hulk up there. Come back to the... Attention, all cars. Repeating broadcast 31. Broadcast 3-1. Following the scribe man escaped from San Quentin. Name, Louis Consolas. About 26. Dark complexion, eyes and hair. Weight, 160. 160. 5 foot 10. Will probably head for the port of Los Angeles. Cover all dark, steam ship and freight terminals. How do you like that? I don't, Louis. I can't do nothing for you. Oh, yes, you can. But I need a hideout so you can fix me for a getaway on a boat. I can't fix nothing for you. It wouldn't be the first time you helped someone out of the country. Meaning? What happened to Molly? 
I don't know. I haven't seen her since the night the cop plugged you. No, well, you helped her to swam, didn't you? I did not. She is, or where she went. I'd like to see Molly. She was a good kid. I'll take it easy. Yeah? Who is it? Me, Mother. Chris. Oh, uh... All right, Chris. Uh, just a minute. Please, it's Louis. Oh, where am I going? All right, I'll help you. Well, that's all I'm asking. Keep you over there. About an hour. Morgan Rock will meet you there. I'll ask him to take you out. Now, if he's given the harbor, he'll do it for me. I'll be there. Hiya, Mother. How you been? All right. Fine. Oh, uh, so you're weighing anchor. Setting a new course tonight. Yeah, we're leaving on the night train for the north. Oh, uh, here's our new address. Sit down, my dear. Molly didn't want anyone but you and Porter to know where we was going. Oh, sure. I understand. Molly's not one to mix much with neighbors. Are you giving up the fishing trade? Yeah. Tell them the old feet of the gentleman to can I'm going there now for the money, and then we'll get started. There's no place for mothers and babies. Take an old sea dog's advice and anchor them ashore. I guess you're right, Mother. Well, I'd better get going. I've got a couple errands to do before I see Jensen. Goodbye, Ma. Smooth sailing to you. Oh, don't matter about me. My voice is almost ended. Ah, oh, you got a lot of time yet. <laughs> Goodbye. Right, we'll write you when we get up there. Well, so, hey, what's the idea? You're acting like I was a plague instead of the old boyfriend. Snap out of it. You going away? Yes. That's nice. I'm thinking of taking a little trip myself. Want to come along? That's over. I'm married now. Married? And the kid is... Mine. Nice looking kid. Who'd you marry? You wouldn't know him. He's not your kind. He's only a fisherman. That's funny. He's not my kind? What are you doing with him? He don't know about you and me. He thinks I'm straight, and I'm never going to tell him different. I don't know. Maybe I got something to say about that. <laughs> I don't know. I ain't so sure about that. I've been sitting in the cell thinking about you for a long time. When I come out, you're all married and washed up with me. I don't like it. Listen, Louis. I ain't gonna tell you why I'm happy like I am. You wouldn't understand. Please let me alone, won't you? We haven't got anything in common anymore. I suppose you know I skipped the pen. I'm taking a long chance coming down here. Yeah, I'm probably drawing every cop in town after you. Please, please go. Before you drag me back into trouble again. You got any dough? No. We're poor. I can't do nothing for you. You sure about that? Not even a kiss goodbye? I don't believe it. Whose gun is that? My husband. You aren't going to take it. That's his gun. He wouldn't take nothing from you. No. He took you, didn't he? Goodbye, baby. You shut up. Come in. 
Oh, Captain Morgan. <laughs> Sit down. Let me get you dropped to wash the salt out of your throat. No, not now, thanks. What's the trouble, Mother McGee? I'm needing your help. It's a favor I'm asking, Captain. Well, you're on the bridge of my ship, Mother. I, uh... I want to get a man out of the country. Through the back door. It's not for myself I'm asking you, Captain. But for a young girl, we both know. I? Who is the man? Louis Constantin. I know. And the girl is Molly, Chris's wife. Huh? How did you know that? Oh, I, I know a lot of things, Mother McGee, that folks don't think I know. I believe you. Now, how about it? Slimy moss off keeps a fair ship from her course. What's that you say? I said the bosom of the sea is broad enough for one more burden. I'll do it. The Plantation King pulls out for Valparaiso at 10 o'clock tonight. Have this Louis meet me at my old ship. And I'll slip him aboard in the channel. Late tonight, Mr. Johnson. Yes. I'll be leaving in about a half an hour. I'll see that everything's secure after you leave. Good night. Good night. Now for business, Chris. Here are the papers on our deal. Let's settle it up. She's a good boat, the old Frieda. And Porky will keep her running in any weather. I hope so. Here, sign the release. Here's the cash. That's the way you wanted it? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Jensen. When are you leaving? Tonight, sir. I'll miss you, boy. Goodbye. And be careful of that money. I will. Goodbye, Mr. Jensen. Goodbye, and good luck. Thank you, sir. Down those shades. Put up your hand. Where's the cash? What cash? Now give me that. I know you've got money here to pay off a guy for a boat. I paid him already. I'll see that for myself. Get away from the safe. Uh-uh, the other way. He's headquarters. Quick. He's here 
everything's going to be all right. Well, everything will be all right. You're a smart old buzzer, Captain. I won't forget you for this. Hey, get aboard. You got everything, Chris? You're in a hurry, huh? Well, I don't blame you. I'll be glad to get away from the smell of fish myself. Come on, let's go. Hello, Christensen. Where are you going? What did you say? You heard me. Where are you going? Hey, what is this? Now, don't get rough or I'll make you behave. This looks like what we want. Listen, you fly cop. That's my money. Where'd you get it? From Jensen down at the cannery. That's just what we thought. You walked into his office? He said, here, son, you take this money. I'm tired of looking at it. He gave me that money for my boat. He bought it tonight. Yeah. And while you were selling that skull of yours, did you happen to drop this? It has your name on it. Well, that's my whole thing. Yeah, but I don't know how you found it. I had it in my bag here. My wife packed it for me. Didn't you, Molly? Yes, Chris. Which bag did you pack it in? This one. even an imitation of a gun in here. Well, that's funny. Yeah, it's hilarious. All right, Mrs. Christensen. Where's that gun now? Why, I... I don't know. Well, what if the gun ain't here? What's this all about? Uh, we'll all get in the car, take a nice little ride down to headquarters, and I'll tell you all about it. You too. Come on. Well, what did you find out? Nothing. We removed the bullet from the body, but we haven't found the gun yet. Christensen, the watchman has testified, and you admit that you saw Jensen tonight. You also admit that this holster, which we found in the alley just outside Jensen's office, is yours. Is that correct? Yes. But I didn't have that holster with me tonight at Jensen's. I had it packed in my bag. Or I thought it was, so he showed it to me. That story doesn't jive. Where were you going when you were arrested? Oregon. My wife can tell you that. Let's see if she can. Bring her in. All right, Mrs. Wissington. understand that anything you say may be used against you and that you have the right of counsel? Molly, they're framing us. Tell them how you packed the gun and we was leaving with the baby for Oregon. Somebody killed Jensen after I left his office tonight. Now these guys think I did it. Well, Mrs. Christensen? Chris didn't do it. But I think I know who did. Who? Louis Consola. What do you know about Louis? He was on our boat tonight while Chris was away. He took that gun and holster. I saw him. That's very interesting, Mrs. Christensen. Why should Louis Consola and escape Condi come to your boat? Did you ever see him or know him before? Yes. Molly, what are you talking about? About myself, Chris. And you've got to listen, too. Well, you don't expect to make that story stick. Constolis is a man that every officer in the state is looking for. Yet you say he came to see you on a boat tied up to a public wharf. Did you ever hear of Molly Deshawn? 
And yes, she's wanted on an old charge. The same one that Consolas went up for. Right. She was his girlfriend. Went on stick ups with him. She was even pinched with him. What's all that got to do with this case? Just this. I'm Molly Deshawn. Huh. Don't make me laugh. Then you think I'm lying, huh? Well, that's a blunt way to put it, but you're correct. Look these fingerprints up in your file. They should match with hers. Now maybe you'll believe me. I'm beginning to already. Now listen. You start at the beginning and tell me. Suppose you start at the beginning and tell me. Is all this true? Is this why you came on my boat that night? I tried to tell you, Chris. To tell you about my past, but you wouldn't listen. Is that why you lied to me? You told me you had no home? I had to. I didn't mean any harm. I wouldn't lie. But I fell in love with you. You mean you used me for the thing? You lied and stuck around because you're afraid to leave? No, Chris, no. So you're a common gun maul, huh? Beating a rap by making a poor, dumb fisherman think he's getting a good wife. You gotta stop it, Chris. It may sound like that, but it's not so. Think of us. Think of the baby. Did you? When you saw this Louis guy on the boat tonight? When you gave him my gun for a holdup? Oh. There's something to remember. Something from me and that baby that you'll never see again. Molly Deshaun, you're under arrest. Father, an importer, an exporter of coffee at Pan was forced into bankruptcy. A sensational development in the Molly Deshawn case came today when the body of Louis Constellus was found washed up on the beach at Point Furman. Constellus, a fugitive from justice, either committed suicide or drowned by attempting to escape from the country, police say. The murder of Wallach were found on his body, which convinced the police that Louis Constellus was Howard Jensen's murderer instead of the suspect, Lars Christensen. Two thirds. He must have fallen overboard from that South American boat. Perhaps. Uh, those things often happen. But the sea holds its secrets. Look at his. Could be your mother's arms around you now instead of mine. Oh, no, dear. Oh, Gordon. Give me another drink, will you? Drink kind of heavy, ain't you, Skipper? Porky, when I'm drunk, I can't think. I don't want to think. I know. Where you been the last three weeks? With a bottle. That ain't such good company, Chris. Why didn't you come to me? <laughs> You're all right, kid. But nobody can do me any good. Molly could. I get it. You don't care what happens to me. You're taking it too hard. Women are like that. One minute they're kicking and squaring, and the next minute they're in your lap. Oh, get me another drink and shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but you do, don't you? All you keep saying is, give me another drink, give me another drink. You think you were the one that's doing the suffering in this mess? You're acting like a spoiled mackerel. You're getting drunk ain't giving Molly a good time. You don't need another drink. You need a good, swift kick. Okay, that's just what I've been giving myself. The biggest beating a man can take. Mentally. And I ain't through yet. I'm ready to take a wall up that I'm liable to feel for a long time. Good 
Sorry, Christopher. Now, you've been told the rules and regulations here, and your treatment will depend entirely upon yourself. I just read the record of your case. Being a new prisoner, I thought I'd talk to you for a few minutes. What is there to talk about? The only thing we have in common is our address. <laughs> well, the report here shows that your crime was a deliberate one, and yet you have no previous record. What's the idea? You sound like a pretty regular guy, so I'm going to tell you something. I suppose you know my wife's serving time here, too, don't you? Well, I wanted her to know that I'm no better than she is. You know, Christensen, devotion to your wife is a very admirable thing. But uh, don't you think the sacrifice of your liberty and name was rather futile? No, sir. It's the only way I could make her understand. For weeks I came here to see her. Well, she wouldn't see me. And so you deliberately committed a crime for the express purpose of being near her. They have the same stigma of prison against you. Yes, sir. She got herself in here when she thought she could save me from trouble. Well, I'm no better than she is now. Maybe she was out of line a little before we married. But if she hadn't turned out to be the greatest mother and wife in the world, she wouldn't be here. Neither would I. You know that this is one of the finest examples of devotion I've ever seen? The court convicted you, and it's my job to see that the sentence is carried out. And I'm going to do my job. But you're not going to start your time without having a few minutes alone with the woman you're serving it for. I just sent for your wife. Oh, uh, you, uh, you won't tell her what I said. No, I won't. In here, you and she will both find out that you'll have loads of time to think but very little time to talk. Now, the next few minutes are yours. You make the most of them. Thank you. Molly. Uh, someone here to see you. Hello, Molly. You've got to listen to me. I've only got a few minutes. I've been crying for weeks to see you and tell you how sorry I was for what happened that night at headquarters. When you started talking about Louis, I lost my... I didn't realize what I was doing. But it's different now. Remember the night you came on the theater? The cops were after me then. That's why I wouldn't let you tell me about your past. Because mine was no garden party. So you see, we're both in the same boat. Won't you forgive me, please? How's my baby? Oh, he's fine. He's with Mother McGee. He's ten months old now. With the help of the warden and the parole board, he won't be much older when we see him again. Time's up. <laughs> 